I recently wrote a journal article on why evolution is a religious theory, not a scientific theory. Now in that paper I have six main chapters and in this video series I'm going to go through each one one at a time. So we'll have six videos, one for each chapter. Of course you can see the paper for more details. The link to the paper is down below. But in this video series I'll go through the high level summary of what I'm saying in that paper. Now, when you say evolution is a religious theory, there's going to be different rebuttals, different reasons. Evolutionists will have all kinds of reasons why it isn't a religious theory. And so that's the, the uh, tack I take in the paper is to address the different rebuttals. So I have six different rebuttals to the, to the uh, idea that evolution is a religious theory. And then in the paper, I show why each rebuttal is false. And you're left with the inescapable conclusion. And it's quite obvious that evolution is a religious theory. So I'll go through those six rebuttals, the, the reasons why each one is wrong in these six videos. So here we go with the first video and the first rebuttal and why it is false. So what is that rebuttal? The rebuttal is that Darwin's discovery of transmutation predated his religious views favoring it. So what, what does that mean? What, what this is getting at is that Darwin, it's, 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 it's a uncontroversial that Darwin had religious views that forced or encouraged his theory of evolution. In other words, simply put, Darwin had an axe to grind. He had religious views. He wasn't a neutral observer. He wasn't this scientist just following the evidence. His friend uh, T.H. Huxley famously later wrote, after Darwin wrote his book on evolution in 1859, Huxley wrote, the scientist must sit down in front of the data like a, a little child and just follow it wherever it leads. Something to that effect. Well, Huxley wasn't doing that and neither was Darwin. The, uh, they, they had an axe to grind. There were reasons why the theory of evolution was developed and reasons why it was accepted. And they are religious reasons. And that's uh, a big part of why evolution is a religious theory. It, he, Darwin was backpedaling when it came to the science. He was defensive. He had to explain away the science. It was with the religion where he hit the hammer came down. Darwin had his strong arguments. So the idea that Darwin had religious views that uh, encouraged or mandated favored evolutionary theory is not controversial. The rebuttal is, again, Darwin's discovery of transmutation predated his religious views favoring it. So in other words, he discovered evolution or transmutation and then his religious views fell into line. He formulated, he developed his religious views because he was convinced evolution was true. Now this rebuttal is not just something you'll hear in chat rooms or the neighbor across the fence. Um, Leading evolutionary thinkers have made this claim. And I'll give you a couple of quotes. John Rice wrote that Darwin became critical of natural theology, the idea that the world was designed. Darwin became critical of natural theology, quote, only after he came to the theory of natural selection. And that would have been 1838, the fall of 1838. So Rice is saying that Darwin became critical of natural theology only after that, only after the fall of 1838. Um, similarly, Dov Ospovat, a historian philosopher uh, of evolutionary thought, wrote, Darwin's evolutionary speculations had forced him to reject teleological explanation. So his evolutionary speculations, he was, he was putting together the theory, he was figuring it out, and that forced him to reject teleology. Again, that is just demonstrably false. And um, I'm going to go through a few of the reasons for that. Now Desmond and Moore wrote this detailed biography of Darwin, Darwin, the life of a tormented evolutionist. And they go through in detail the years that Darwin spent in the 1830s developing his theory of evolution. And they explain that before the fall of 1838, Darwin became convinced and the, his, his social milieu strongly advocated the idea that the, the world arose by natural law, natural processes, not by miracle, not by fiat. So here's, for example, they write, Dining at Lyell's, dancing at Babbage's, he found the idea of miraculous, catastrophic interruptions increasingly deplored. The rule of law had to be upheld. So that's Desmond and Moore, page 218. 
Darwin also expressed privately in his notebooks where he was writing to no one but himself his religious views on why the world must have occurred, must have arisen by strictly naturalistic processes. I'll read you one example from 1838, but prior to the fall of 1838, earlier in 1838, Darwin wrote, How far grander than idea from cramped imagination that God created the rhinoceros of Java and Sumatra, that since the time of the Silurian he has made a long succession of vile molluscous animals. And in uh, parenthetically he, he says here, warring against the very laws he established in all organic nature. Continuing, how beneath the dignity of him who is supposed to have said, let there be light and there was light, whom it has been declared, he let there be light and there was light. Bad taste, Darwin concludes. So it's just uncool. Now, there's a lot to unpack there, and I won't go through all the details, but uh, that, that paragraph is packed with metaphysical thought. For example, Darwin writes there, how beneath the dignity of him, in reference to the Creator. This idea that the creating the world is beneath the dignity of the Creator was a popular argument both in Darwin's time and in centuries past. Uh, you can see my video on the infra dignitatum, beneath the dignity of God, uh, made popular, this argument made popular by, among others, John Ray, for many the father of British natural theology, and before him, Ralph Cudworth, the scholar, Anglican scholar in the uh, 17th century. Beneath the Dignity of God, a religious argument there in Darwin's notebook, early 1838. Now you can also find in Desmond and Moore a good description of Darwin's early years growing up and his years at Edinburgh University. Now Darwin's grandfather Erasmus, the century before, had written on evolutionary ideas, and those were influential. And growing up, Darwin's family was more deistic uh, or Unitarian than anything else and would have been partial to evolutionary ideas. And at Edinburgh University, Darwin ran into and consumed some very strong evolutionary ideas, very much against the idea of God creating the world. And by the time you get to 1831, when Charles Darwin got on the HMS Beagle and sailed around the world for that five-year voyage, Darwin had strong religious views favoring evolution. Let me read to you one of the top Darwin scholars in the world, Michael Ruse, and let's hear what he had to say. This is about Darwin's years on the HMS Beagle. Darwin rejected miracles. His theological commitment was to deism rather than to theism. He grew to accept an unmoved mover who works through unbroken law rather than a god of intervention who works through miracles that break physical laws. The greatness of God lay in his ability to plan everything beforehand and then just step back and watch it unfurl as he intended. This was the God that Charles Darwin accepted. So this was Ruse's, Michael Ruse, who is an evolutionist. I've debated him a couple of times, know well his position. And that was his rendition of the religious views of Charles Darwin prior to the fall of 1838. So the evidence just doesn't hold up that Darwin discovered evolution and then later developed uh, his religious views around that. No, he had religious views going into his development of the theory of evolution. That's rebuttal one, uh, number one and why it fails. Next, we'll move on to rebuttal number two.